I'm going to invite back my first guest, Simone Weimans. Um, and I would say, Simone, what did you learn tonight? What did I learn tonight? <laughs> now, first of all, I was really uh, inspired by a number of projects. Uh, I saw, for instance, uh, Coralie Vogelaar, yeah. uh, the, the analysis of news photos. I thought that was a really yeah, riveting way of, of showing these iconic news photos in choreography and, and, and telling stories. Do you stories. even recognize the of poses? Course, the of poses, course, of course. They're very yeah. iconic poses that we see on the news almost every day. And also uh, the, the re-educated project with uh, Marisa Katz, you know, visualization of news stories in animation. It has been done before. I, I remember a movie, an uh, Iranian movie, uh, was also animated about a girl f fleeing Iran oh, um, with her family. Uh, it reminded me of that, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. story. Um, I'll come up with the name. I yeah. know which one you mean. It's yeah, in black and Oscar. white. Yes, a, yeah, yeah. yes. I think yeah. that's also that's yeah a, a little yeah. bit similar. And I definitely saw aspects of of um, of projects that we could use on the news as well. I mean, we, we're not going to do a choreography. Uh, I don't think my chief editor will <laughs> will, will like it if we certainly uh, break out and dance uh, and and show the news in that way. But uh, it's, I think it's very interesting, certain project we could definitely incorporate in how we tell, uh, tell our stories on the news. And, uh, there, yeah. there, I, I also noticed that some of the projects are uh, some kind of meta projects in that they are sort of analyzing journalism. Yes. So uh, in, instead of using it in a news program, it could be something to to reflect upon yeah. what you guys are doing. Yeah, and right? also reflecting upon how uh, the techniques we use to tell our stories. For instance, th this timeline, I thought it was really uh, interesting also. And also, you know, for us, some some... The ways we work are very, we've been doing it for 50 years, and it's very interesting to see other people reflecting on what we do, and we can use those those reflections to, to change mm -hmm. uh, the way we work. But also, I also wanted to say that um, traditional ways of telling the news are... I don't think they will they will leave us. They will be very important no, still. That, but that would be really Yeah, but I sometimes feel that people look down upon traditional news media or the news anchor or uh, but I still I feel that those forms of storytelling will always stay with us, that they have they have proven their their importance and mm -hmm. the fact that they, are, they have a lot of impact on our audience. So that won't change. And I also think when it comes to day to day news making, if there's if a bomb goes off in Parliament, there's a pretty traditional way that we will cover that and that people will watch right. this news unfold in a relatively traditional way. But maybe in two weeks time, you can do an analysis or, you know, you can visualize it in a different way. And I think that those aspects we can definitely incorporate in, in what we do. Yeah. Um, I will show the viewers and you um, two last uh, pieces to, um, um, to round off with. Um, the first piece is about uh, theater. Uh, Stein mentioned it already uh, when we started. It's a piece by Teatro di Nascosto, the hidden theater, hidden theater. It's a theater group, theater concept uh, thought up by Annette Henneman, a Dutch artist. Uh, she's based in Volterra in Italy. And the work we're uh, going to watch is a brief episode from a project called The Catwalk, in which 23 actors from Iraq, Kurdistan, Palestine, and Syria tell the news headlines. Uh, there is music, and uh, on music, they tell their personal stories from life with uh, love, pain, loss, dreams, memories, and hope. And before we're going to watch it, I would like to say that Annette Henneman is somebody who travels to, to these places. She goes to Basra in Iraq. She goes to the uh, occupied Palestinian territories to talk to people. She is with her feet on the ground, and that's where she gets their, her uh, stories. She listens to people to their stories. And with a lot of people that she meets, she makes uh, um, produces the pieces that she, uh, that she makes. Here is the catwalk. Hadd tkun al 
سعاد فاجعتنا يا غرمي لما ودعت اليأس لفحتكن ريح الشمس ورجعت ايديكن تبني وتعمر صوت عياتكن خزق سماعهن فرح معاويكن بالارض بس شعرهن بهدم براجن حبوا يردوكن عاليه عم بيقولوا بدن يعتقلوا ناس كتير لا تخافوا ما في حبوسة ساعة كل الناس بيعتقلوا كتير بيبقى كتير وباللي بيبقوا رح منكمل غمر الطوفان الأرض ورجعوها Now this was of course a short clip with everything put together. We didn't hear the people telling their stories, but this is literally personalizing the news. Yeah, right? I think that's really, it's, I think it's a really beautiful way of, and also maybe a way of uh, dealing with trauma because you can see, I think it's also about war and uh, dealing with war and those stories will be told probably in this in this play as well. So, so going to people themselves and reflecting on their stories, I think that's, uh, I mean, I don't think we will use it in our <laughs> form, but I think it's a very uh, attractive way of, of telling stories as well. Yeah, it's just yeah, the first time I've seen it. Hugging, yes, hugging you can see so the, the impact yeah. that it has on, on people's lives. Yeah. So, um, this is a way, uh, Teatro di Nascosto, it's a way to divulge the news and to divulge stories. Um, our last example of tonight, and uh, then we all round off. So. Stay with us for, let's say, five more minutes or so. Our last example is uh, something that I think is a brilliant piece. It's a project by Reporters Without Borders, and it's called The Uncensored Library. And The Uncensored Library is uh, meant to avoid censorship. A lot of we are talking about the free press. We still have the possibility to get the news, but there are a lot of countries where there is no way to get uh, re real uh, trustworthy news. Um, what Reporters Without Borders did, they used the very popular game Minecraft, and in the surroundings of Minecraft, they build a library. Censorship, blockages, internet surveillance and incredibly restrictive laws. Orta Doğu'da basın özgürlüğü hiç bu kadar kötü olmamıştı. I run Granirou, which is blocked in Russia. My name is Nguyen Van Dai. I am a news broker from Vietnam. I was sentenced 15 years in prison. Benim adım Hatice Cengiz. Cemal Kaşıkçı'nın nişanlısıyım. Freedom of speech is important because we need to inform young people about the real political situation around the world. The Uncensored Library is a bold use of Minecraft. It really encapsulates everything that's great about this game and the community that it's created. As I look at this gorgeous Uncensored Library, I feel like this is what we should be doing. Dünyadaki bütün insanların özgürce bilgiye ulaşmasını istiyorum. The only real way of fighting censorship is sharing and spreading what is being censored.
Simona, the uncensored library. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. We started the, the talk with uh, talking about press freedom and to fight for freedom. And of course, you have all these different projects where people are telling stories. But in these countries, they really can't tell the stories they really want. And this project, to me, yeah, it's, it's almost brings tears to your eyes. It's such an original way of fighting for press freedom. And uh, yeah, I, th I think uh, we should all embrace projects like this, definitely, for sure. Thank you very much for being yeah, here. Welcome.